and happier than whoa. This business is um, uh, so interesting and, and such a lot of fun most of the time. Here we go. Simon Wolf is a man who lives and probably sleeps with his camera always at hand. He's a third generation photographer running a family business established in 1934. He's exhibited and been published widely here and overseas. Simon was thrust into the sharp end of the business with the untimely death of his father, who was killed while filming from a helicopter that crashed. If what you're doing isn't enjoyable, you probably shouldn't be doing it. I'm really, really lucky. Honoured. Yeah, well, that's right. a pretty good little camera. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm hoping that you might be able to show me how to use it, because I have not a clue in the world. Oh, it's an Olympus, so this has got the dust reduction. It's got all the little little um, features on it. Yeah, see, it's the features that get me. I have no idea how to use any of them. E300, 8 megapixel. Right. So that, that's um, pretty good. Um, it's got P for professional, which is I, really program. I, I want A for amateur. <laughs> oh, it's got A for, A, A for aperture. Uh, oh, that's aperture. <laughs> that's my problem. <laughs> yeah, it's not amateur. It's aperture. Aperture right. priority, shutter priority, okay. manual. It's even got a scenic mode on uh, here okay. if you want to shoot landscapes. Okay, good. I need to know all this. And well, it's got a hyper crystals LCD, which is pretty damn bright. See, see this is, yeah, good. Right, we're going to have to sit down, I'm going to have to take notes. Yeah, absolutely. And, and ISOs ranging good. from, I'm not sure, we better turn this on. Oh, see, uh, on Simon thinks that we've brought him here today to uh, shoot a documentary upon him and his uh, photo taking abilities, but secretly it's actually just a lesson for Clark to learn how to use his girlfriend's camera, which he doesn't even know how to turn on. That's so true. so what are we looking at down here? Yeah, this is the habitat of yeah. the um, shag. Right, so you've... Often known as a cormorant, you know, but that's the habitat and they'd, they'd be all in amongst that. Again, that's the beauty of digital, isn't it? Yeah, you can do all sorts, like um, this camera's got live view right. as well. So that's the, the carcass in behind making a hell of a racket. Yeah, you don't see the, the grey warbler very often, you just hear them, that's the one that goes... No. Very tiny, and you don't... Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> that was cool! So you're recognised as a bird person? No, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, amongst um, a close association of friends who are photographers, probably. I was going to be a professional football player. And for the 10 years that I worked in the business, I was still heavily involved in my soccer. Um, but then um, I actually got injured um, playing soccer and I picked up a camera and did sports photography, you know, hocked off images to the local newspaper and then found that I really enjoyed taking wedding photos in particular and it all sort of kicked off from there. Then Dad passed away and, and I knew that I had a, a bit of a responsibility. I wasn't terribly confident to start off with because the nature of the accident was pretty um, traumatic. The biggest um, boost was when um, in 1988, early, um, Internal Affairs asked if we would be the official photographers for the 1990 year and I initially said no, that would have been my father's job. I'm sorry, I don't think I've got the confidence to handle this. And the, the person from Internal Affairs says, you actually don't have a choice in this. The request is coming from the ninth floor. So that was David Longy. <laughs> and he, he um, looked after me. I'm, you know, like, I sort of feel emotional about that now, but I, the family owes him a, a, a very big debt. He was that sort of guy that took a personal interest in in people in, in adverse situations and he so he, he enjoyed dad's company he used to turn up in the dark room you had to get away from the ninth floor and so you're saying this is good light um out here is but you see you see this one up here it's quite close to it, just oh wow through That's the gap there's actually two the, the second one's in, in reasonably good light if, I, yeah, if just... I do a little lens change here i might be able to whack him not whack him, but whack his photo, you know. It's, it's, it's photo speaking. I'm catching up quite quickly. Yeah, taking photos of birds is, is something that's quite important to me because it allows me to get out of some of the areas that are a little bit stressful. So to get your space, it's, it's nice to get out there, but also I've always enjoyed birds. Never could draw when I was little. So the camera came in handy and, and I was mentored by one of the best and Jeff Moon. So, you know, he passed away recently, so, you know, I feel, you know, again, privileged that I've been given 
you know, that skill by somebody who was probably the best in the world at what he did. If you know what you're doing. Well, yeah, I was going to say, you probably wouldn't get away with that photo on, on your cell phone. No, no, that's right. <laughs> You said one of your favourite birds was the, the kotuku? Yeah, the kotuku was, it's just a remarkable bird. You know, like there's not very many of them. There probably wouldn't be a hundred birds in New Zealand. And in 1988, the government made the bird the, the bird of, of, of the 1990 year and then found that they didn't have too many photos, if any, of the bird in flight. And so down I went to the west coast and to Okarita, which is probably one of the most beautiful places in the world, not just in New Zealand, and managed to, to get some really stunning you know, white heron photos. See, that's unusual. See, that's a wood pigeon. Why is that unusual? Because this valley didn't have wood pigeons three years ago. And uh, I noticed you had a, a, quite a handy uh, Kaka impersonation going on before. <laughs> yes. Now I have to think about what that one is. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, they're all oh, flown see, off. Look at that. There was, there was... <laughs> oh, the blackbird likes it. <laughs> oh, no, it's a tui. Which so is, which so is this good. is our next assignment? Yeah, this is our next assignment. There, the Holiday Inn are looking to um, do some work for their brochures. And this should be quite entertaining because they're not a real bride and groom. They just work together. OK. <laughs> they've, they've said that they don't mind getting close and personal. <laughs> You're going to be the lighting man in the next, <laughs> yeah, next one. I'll right? be whatever you want me to be, Simon. Yeah, yeah. I'm a bit disappointed I don't have two cameras to carry. So if oh, I, I can give you my little one. Well, oh, well, I've... Here we are. Oh, there we go. Yeah, take, take this one. I want to look like a proper photographer, isn't it? Yeah, that's my <laughs> side slinger, it's my backup. Yeah. It's my trusty workhorse. Yeah. This, this is the, the big gun. Absolutely. <laughs> I As I said, it's I like... I haven't turned it on or taken a photo yet, but shit, do I look the part. You, you do. You know, like, um, as I said, it's, it's you know, not the camera, it's what, six inches behind exactly. it there, Clark, So, you know? suit and tie, big camera. Yeah. Photographer, business cards. Oh, there they are. Looking stunning. Good one. I knew you guys would shape up well. Hi, <laughs> Lee, how's it going? Good one. Good one. Ed, Ev. Hello. Yeah. You um, obviously have. Oh, how are you sorry, going? Sorry, sorry. Hi, yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, I'm, I'm very good. Hi, it's OK. Hi, nice Yeah. So you enjoyed Wilkins, obviously. Yeah. Well, had a good time. How, how, how long did it take you to choose the, the attire? About an hour or so. Tried oh, yeah. lots of different dresses on. Yeah. Are they going to speak to me? Yes. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so, um, Simon, what are we trying to do? What are we hoping to achieve here? Getting some really lovely um, bridal shots using the hotel as uh -huh. um, the location. Um, this is um, for the hotel's marketing. Yep. And um, these guys aren't actually a, an item. Okay. But they like each just other. Just clearing that up for the yeah, camera. Yeah, yeah, just to make sure that, you know. It's a forced arrangement. But we, we, we've had a little bit of a chat beforehand, so we know exactly how far we can go and can't go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I just want to have fun in my life, and if I can be as good at as many things as I can and be diverse, then each thing can help the other aspect, and that's, that's really important. You know, like weddings are the ultimate in that they incorporate people, architecture, still life. Yeah, yeah touch, touch, you know. And documentary, the whole gamut landscape, you know, Right across a whole whole numbers of different fields, and I think, you know, like you're continually practicing different things. It's a it's a moment in time. It's not terribly creative, but you can turn it into something that is by your presentation. Yeah, that looks good too. Now just lean your heads in close. See they they, yeah, they look in love. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just yeah, just look back like that. That's great. Oops, we've got a little technical hitch here. We've got a man in the background with a cup of coffee. It's good timing, I had to change my card. Pop another little card in here. You, you must deal with a lot of nervous couples, I imagine. Yeah. There. Yeah. Well, how do you get them to sort of relax into it? I give them heaps. Yeah. <laughs> I just give them heaps. Just give... Oh, but I'm, I'm already on a, on a wavelength. Have you had a, a memory, memory card corrupt on you? No, um, not corrupt, but, but crap out. Crap out. And what it was, was that the card was electronically failed. So what they did was after going through the police forensic photography section, um, they um, sent the, the manufacturer, or the wholesaler sent it to the manufacturer in Auckland. Right. And they just swapped the memory into another. Oh, right, and rescued the images. Rescued the images, but we didn't know that we could do it for two weeks. Yeah, so you thought you'd... Stressful couple of weeks, I imagine. Stressful couple of weeks, right. yeah. And 
Is he allowed to pop his hand around here? Yeah. Just in. Yeah. If there's anything that doesn't fit right, you just both of you say. Yeah, snuggle, snuggle. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, just just laugh away, you guys. <laughs> Normally, I'd say to the groom beforehand, you know, whisper something sexy into. Is that right? Your wife's yeah. here, but you know these guys. <laughs> I don't know how that would go because this is a shoot. Yeah. I've got this little guy in the background. <laughs> Actually, just stay there. Just just stay by the fridge. Yeah, because that, that's real. Yeah. Um, no, just come across here, just as if you're working at the till or something. Okay. Yeah, just oblivious to what these guys are doing. That's good. See, I bounce off my hand a bit. Okay. Because what it does is that my hand is flesh coloured and it bounces into flesh colour. And so it's not too... Oh, I see, right. So it just offsets warms the, it up a little bit. Yeah, way. the cuts. And I'll just do one there too. Yeah, and, and to have a third person in there just being oblivious makes it look as though it's real. Mm -hmm. Rather than just, you know, I, I always like to bring a... It's another, it's another, little, 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 another little wolf secret. Another there. little wolf secret. Do you want to see that, guys? Dress the scene. Oh, that's nice. Here you go. You see that? Wow. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's really you cool. You guys are doing great. Is that real champagne? Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> keep it, keep it. We'll, we'll take that with us to, to yeah. where we're going, yeah. Gee, that dress really does flow. How do you feel about lying on the bed together? This is a little bit warmer than the outside. Oh, it's really cold. It's a summerly now. Yeah, lean in. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, good, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just look at each other. Is that, yeah, it's not comfortable, is it? No. Give him another little whack. <laughs> Do you know what? Your timing was really good there. That's we pushed the button that, at hey? exactly the same time. <laughs> that's all you needed to do. That was good. See, that's that's me. Mm -hmm. Let's see yours. Oh, mine, mine. <laughs> oh no, that's good. I, I just, went a bit tighter there. Yeah, no, no, that's yeah. good. Did your flash come on then? No, no, I didn't. I kept it well away. Didn't want to. I think you, you have a look at, look at, look. Go on there. Get in there <laughs> Just. And while it was slightly embarrassing having my shots measured up against the professional skills of Simon, it was great slyly picking up a few tips and tricks oh, wow. off him as we went. Feet in there. <laughs> no, that's all right. Good. Okay, we're good to go. So, just touching on what we talked about before, if say the bride had been on the champers since nine in the morning mm -hmm. and it was in the face you could fix up the face in post yes you to could, a degree yeah right like one of my mates in australia um, did this lady's wedding for a second time and she paid ten and a half thousand dollars to get her head from the first wedding put on the second <laughs> wedding so her husband had <laughs> A woman that was quite considerably younger. Right. Put into the wedding photos. Yeah. And and my wow. mate, who was one of Melbourne's top photographers at the time, said that he didn't mind doing it, you know, because she wanted it. Yeah. And it was a hell of a lot cheaper than plastic surgery and a lot less painful. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a really good it's, anecdote. But yeah. you know, like I prefer to get people real mm -hmm. and having them look look cool on a day. In the moment. And I'll do anything to to have my my brides and grooms relax. Right. You know, like I'm, I play the goat. I go go to heights. I've even been known to, you know, to get a perspective shot to jump on the roof of my car. Yeah. You know, which wasn't too sensible when I was leasing our cars, because then I had to pay for the dents in the roof <laughs> afterwards. Kia ora, Good, good. This is Clark. Hi. I, 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 I don't get the hug yet. I warned you about Clark. <laughs> yeah. And he's doing a, a little bit of um, interviewing and. I'm mentoring him, and and we're going to get some photos for Hut City in the process. Okay, cool. All right. And and for for you guys, hopefully, to promote a little bit of um, what you do here, which Thanks. is seriously cool. Our okay. next stop is at Waifetu Marae, five minutes from the centre of Lower Hut. Yeah. The assignment here is to take photos of the Marae's activities for publications by the local council to promote Lower Hut. I've trained them. 
I followed along closely, still trying to pick up on the tricks of his trade. That's right. Yeah. I should see how much I've learned. <laughs> Come in. This is Annie. Hi, Annie. Thank you. Hi, Simon. Nice to meet you. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. It's my daughter, Annie. And Annie's a weaver. She's hey. learning with my sister, Verona. So she's been weaving for a couple of years. And she's Your mum um, told me that you were pretty cool. <laughs> Yesterday, not today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Annie's happy to be photographed. We have to cut the yeah. bottom off. Alright. See, this is the sort of image that I, I really like. Yeah. Because you've got all the secondary interest around. Mm -hmm. Which is. So that's the sort of thing you're looking for? Yep. This flax plant has come from our, my great grandmother, Rangi Māori, um, from her um, flax plantation, her pa Harakeke. And this particular flax is good for the fibre in that leaf, yep. the muka, which is what we make the kiwi feather cloaks from. Do we got it sorted? You're not too big on dressing yeah. the scene too much, Simon? Dre no. No? I, I um, you like changing things around yeah. too much. No, I, you know, this is um, very much documentary photography, environmental where things, I, I believe, shouldn't be altered too much. They should be, remain as, as they are. Right. This is about a fiftieth of a second. And if I get a little bit of movement, I'm not too concerned. Right, because it blurs because it. Because it blurs it, and it's actually, there is movement yeah. with the, what Annie's doing. So at the moment, I'm just taking the moisture out. Makes mm -hmm. it easier to weave, if you feel that. So compared to the other end, it's just right. softer, and you can just yeah. see, yeah, so. So do you find that things come to you through the viewfinder or do you just sort of take in something like this and, and mentally pick off what you're going to try and cover? Um, I don't preconceive. Yeah. Um, sometimes I'll work around with both cameras, mm -hmm. um, but generally it's um, a lot of what comes to me, the inspiration is similar to what is happening here with Arnie yeah. and, and what's been passed down. Okay, so you sort of let her, yeah. like in this example, dictate the scene? Yeah. Right. Well, I notice in all these situations, even with the birds, you like to talk to your subjects mm -hmm. quite a bit. You find that that's sort birds, of... Yeah. He's yeah. been talking yeah. to birds, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, you know, that, that's uh, another, another photographer, Elliot Irwitt, you know, the great magnum photographer who specialises in dogs. Right. He's got this great repertoire of woof sounds. <laughs> in fact, one of, the, one of the books that I think he entitled was some um, Woof. Woof. W-O-O-F. Just you know? like that. And he, yeah, to get, he came out to New Zealand four years ago and I couldn't believe what he did with police dogs and sheep dogs, you know, to get them to react. He got down on his hands and knees and, and really grunted and growled and, and got great, fantastic photos. Yeah. You know? Don't worry, I'm not going to woof at you. <laughs> we, we've already had the kaka today. That's uh, that is something. It's quite special. Yeah. Is this relatives? This is my mother. In that photo, she's softening the muka so that when it's woven, it's nice and soft against your skin. It's nice to have that sort of history recorded photographically. Yeah. And when, when were they taken? Uh, they, those were in the late 70s. Seem to have lasted well. Mm. Yeah, colour photography in the 70s <laughs> was not. Not that good. Yeah, no, but they've done well. Mm. It's nice to get the. Honey's grandmother in the background is. Yeah. Watching over me. <laughs> yeah, that's that. Yeah. A little on Annie's face. How's that working for the light in the background? Is this, yeah, no, it's quite quite good actually. You want those shadows? I don't mind the shadows because that's a that's a a third dimension. Okay. I'll just do one this. Actually, I might whip that off just for a tick, and I might just bounce a little bit up here. All right. See what the difference is. Dun dun dun. dun. She's gonna smile. <laughs> I knew you would. <laughs> so that was pretty neat. 
we, we got here. I'm exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's how it happens. And this, this is our abode, welcome. Wouldn't be downtown Wellington without a wolf studio somewhere, would it? Nope, how nope. Many, how 1934. Many years? 1934. Yeah. It's quite a long time. And ago. we're progressing. Yeah. Because I don't like people to think that we're an old studio. <laughs> we are, we're a progressing studio. Yeah, we, we go for it. And this is the third incarnation? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sort of started off with Spencer Digby. Yes. And he mentored my father and a few other great photographers like Brian Brake. Mm -hmm. And then Dad took over in 1959, 1960. And he passed away in 1987. And then since then, my mother, my sister, and myself have been pretty fully involved with right. my wife on the fringes. Should we have a look around the rest of these Absolutely. Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, this is um, an area that I'm pretty proud of. Yeah. With, with the acrylics, that, that shot there, I was um, wow. minus eight degree chill factor. Uh -huh. I took it. Suffering and, for your art. And it was about this time of year, about 6.15, I'm sort of um, taking photos in the, in the freezing cold and um, someone rings me. <laughs> and I could see this freak wave coming in and I, I said, excuse me, I'm just going to have to go, I'll have to ring you in the morning. And um, took about five paces back and I would have been drowned if I hadn't have taken those paces. Right. You know, <laughs> my gear would have been absolutely saturated. Got out just in time. That, that one I there like that of little, little Lily, we followed her family through, um, right through the marriage, the, yeah. the pregnancy photos, and now Lily's got a, a little brother Harrison. You create a real connection with these people and they, they, they keep coming back, so yeah. despite well, the stick that you give them. Yeah, <laughs> I give them heaps, <laughs> you know, but in a nice way. And it, you, know, you know, like I believe that everything about having photos taken is about recording milestones and it being a really good experience. Yeah. And this looks to me like some of the images we've taken today. Absolutely. It doesn't take long. There's the old Tui. Mm -hmm. And you know, you crop these in. That's quite a nice little shot of a, of a kaka. I think that's a better shot, and you'd probably crop that in yeah. really, really, really close. It's amazing how they've, um, they have really come to life once you blow them up on screen. Yep. That's the one we took with a little bit of flash. Mm -hmm. And then we moved right along, didn't we, to our wedding. These were the warming up shots. So is this the sort of thing you normally do, come in here and review your yeah, photos at the I end of the day? Yeah, I just go through, you know, like after a wedding, you know, I'll be up until at least one o'clock going yeah. through, making sure everything's hunky-dory. See, that's, these are great images. Mm. Yeah, these, yeah, right, that's really nice. Oh, I do particularly like the lighting in that one. Yeah, that's because you did it. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you're a worry to yourself. <laughs> oh, you know, just their little highlights really just broken that image up nicely. Yeah. Yeah, I, I enjoy seeing people have a pride in what they do as well and being able to capture that. Yeah. Do you get a feeling for... You know, you look at that shot and, you know, I know what I can do to this shot. It might look quite plain on the screen as it is, but I know that, you know, in post-production that I would be, you know, sorting it out and that it's got immediate a impact to it because she's just happy in what she's doing. These sort of are supplementary sort of shots that, that show part of the process. Mm -hmm. They're not the key shots, but they're still nice shots. Um, it says a lot about Anna in the shot as well because of the little wristbands. You know, it's the contemporary part of her life, and now she's, you know, she's working on something that's pretty important. Now, a reviewer once described a few hours with Simon Wolfe as a bit like passing through the eye of a cyclone of enthusiasm. And after spending the whole day with him, I know exactly what they mean. I really enjoyed my time today with him, taking a few photos, although my <coughs> skill level left quite a bit to be desired. But as a job, keeping up that sort of pace and that sort of enthusiasm and that skill level all combined in the package that he has, I just don't think I could cut it. That was impressive. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.